here's a video on how to use the composer editor to form your HTML code for project 4.7. First of all, I'm going to get the code from the web that is the code for the example that I've given you. You can get to there by q123.us slash desktops and that gets you to view the example that I've put up on the screen. Now I'm going to suggest because of the complexity of this HTML that if you're not already familiar with HTML, and you probably aren't, the best thing to do is to start with this code and once you download it, open it up in the composer editor which you would have downloaded and installed on your computer. That's a separate issue and there's a separate little video I've prepared for that. Here, let's do this. I'm using Internet Explorer, the 32-bit version. Go to View and select Source. Now, in my case, you saw something flash, and then it's actually still there, but for some reason it's not popping up and staying. If I go down to the icon for Internet Explorer, you'll notice there are two images, and if I go to the second one and click on it, this HTML code now is present. I'm using Windows 7. This may have something to do with it. This image may remain fixed on your screen as soon as you do this, depending on the browser and the operating system you're using. In any case, just go to File, and you want to save, and you want to save it as HTML source. Now that's not going to name it for you in the original way, but it will give you the ability to say where you want to download this to. I would suggest that you establish for yourself a folder, which you see here is a folder that I established, and you would have a folder like this somewhere on your computer. I've already downloaded this once, but I'm going to download it a second time just to show you what happens when you bring that down. I'll name this anything I care to, just perhaps my project for seven screen. And if I do that, let's see what it's going to save it as type. It should put the HTML on the end of it. Let's see if it does. And now I will go to that folder and under Microsoft's convention it names it .htm instead of HTML. There's no problem with that. Now if we were to right mouse click on this and open with Internet Explorer, you'd see the same thing. If you want to look at this with Composer, here's the way to do it. First of all, let's close out of this because we don't want to be confused with what we're looking at. So I'm going to close all tabs. Now, I happen to have an icon down here in my taskbar for Composer, but suppose I didn't. Now I've closed all my screens. I'm back at my desktop and I've downloaded Composer and as a part of the installation it puts up an icon for itself. So I'm just going to open this. Here's the way Composer opens up and then I can select the file that I want to work with. So I'm going to open file and I can go find it once again. Here I've already navigated to it so I'll select this file and open it. It's showing to me the way this looks more or less, but this is in a mode where I can edit the code. Now notice down here there are three different ways to view this. I'm not going to worry about split because split starts getting kind of complicated, but I am going to go to source just to show you what this looks like. So here is the code. I didn't create this using Notepad. In other words, I didn't write this HTML raw. I actually used Composer to put it together because Composer more or less lets me see the way that I'm going to see it when I present it. It's much easier than having to work with all of this raw HTML. It's not that it is complicated, it's just that it's repetitious. Every one of the images has its own little chunk of code here, but because there are 15 images, there's a lot of repetition of that. What you're looking at here is the placement of three pictures. This is one row. Let's just focus on one picture. So this little TD to TD, this is the code that 
presents one picture. In this case, it's the picture that I've stored here. Now that's not going to be the location of your pictures. One of the things we're going to have to change is this, and that will change automatically when you replace my images with yours. So for the moment, let's just close up Composer. I'm suggesting that what you have in your folder is a folder of the images that you're using at their full size. So however you've acquired those images on the web, whatever, they may not all be this size, but I'm going to look in here and I'm going to show you what my images looked like. They weren't all this size to start with, but after I had resized them, I resized them all to this. And I can do that using GIMP or some other photo editor or using some other tool, perhaps the resize tool that's available for Microsoft to download. In any case, the name here doesn't matter. I just tend to name things in such a way that the name tells the size, but the system knows the size. So here in this folder, my desktop image is 1366 by 768. That's what you find. The reduced size images, and here I'm looking at them because the view has been set to large icons. I'm going to go to details instead. And now the view is similar to what you saw in the other folder. Here the dimensions are all the reduced size images. It's the reduced size images that you're working with for the HTML. So you really do have two sets of these images. You start with the images that you standardize to the desktop size, whatever desktop size you're using, and then you have the reduced size images that you're going to use in your HTML. And that's important because you don't want the big images coming in and then you trying to reduce them in the HTML because that will really slow down the way this screen works. So now you see where we have the images. In order to make this thing a little bit clearer, I'm going to take my first image here and I'm going to rename it just something kind of goofy. And let's just call this demo one. And let's do the second one. We'll rename that one as Demo 2. Now those aren't particularly descriptive names, but I'm going to focus on those two in the way that I modify the code using Composer. So let's go down here to Composer again. Now I'm looking at the code, but I really don't want to look at it this way. We had looked at Source as an example. Let's go to Design. Here's what I'm going to suggest that you do. You can work with all of this pretty much as if it were a word processor. For starters, you're probably not going to need this line. You don't have to send people any other place for resources. So if you highlight it and press the delete key, it'll go away. But you still have the line. If you press the backspace key, it pulls out the line. This is probably OK text for you, but supposing you had a different size here, you could replace this in the same way of highlighting it and typing over it as you would in a word processor. Where is your video? If I had wanted to make something into a hyperlink, I'll show you how to do that in just a second, but let's get rid of this as a hyperlink, or at least let's change it fairly similar to actually creating a new one. If I take what I want to make a hyperlink and I highlight it and I go to insert link, this is going to show me where this hyperlink goes to. Whatever you had copied from some other location as the location of your video, you can just highlight this and then do a paste and you'll replace my link with yours. Now just for example purposes, here's just a silly video that I put together the other day. I can copy this address by doing Control C and if I then go back into Composer I can paste it there. Clicking OK. This is really kind of beyond the scope, but if you wanted to make your images available to somebody else, you could zip them up, put them on the web, and then you could use the insert and link on this text to give people the location. Here you see that I have done that because this is part of the project. But you probably won't even need this line. And if you wanted to get rid of it, of course, you could just do the same thing we had done before. And if you hit the backspace twice, you'll have eliminated it. The same thing goes for this line here at the bottom. You can highlight any part of that, and you can replace it. You can create a link 
the same way that I just mentioned by insert and link. And you can also make some text italicized and some not. And if I really wanted to bold this as well, it's simple to do that. You see here the result and the source will have changed because the source is being used by Composer to actually put this up.